Okay, let's get started on the afternoon session. And according to my information, we are starting with Alexi. So, I, did, I doubt that Alexi really needs any introduction, but I will do so anyway. Alexi is a professor at the cybernetics department, head of the Beaker Labs at National Research Nuclear University, MEPFI, in Moscow, and is the father of this wonderful conference. How do I? Um, you just push the green okay. one to advance. And you, if you have a video, you can press the red one. I don't see All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I shall try to keep my talk brief, um, especially because uh, most part of it were already presented before me today. Uh, so I will be skipping several parts. Uh, but uh, first I am going to tell you the logic behind our approach to implementing artificial social intelligence. And uh, then I will uh, tell you some of examples of our preliminary results. Uh, first, uh, I should probably briefly repeat what John Laird was already mentioning today. Like today we are talking about uh, two things, one of which is mainstream uh, deep neural networks, including large language models. Another is cognitive architectures like Baika. Uh, many people here think of them as one and the same thing, but they are in a sense opposite because the first kind are statistical models and they are not considered uh, cognitive. The, the second is cognitive. Uh, moreover, the first kind develops by itself. It uh, grows by learning on its own from data, and the second one needs to be engineered by hands, and that's a huge difference. Uh, the, the real problem is to integrate the two. Uh, and I'm not the first today who says, uh, who mentions this point, of course. Uh, so why do we need this integration? First, despite all their power, uh, these wonderful la large language models and deep neural networks still cannot do several things. One thing they cannot do is social interaction at the adult human level, like building personal relationships, uh, understanding other minds, uh, experiencing uh, human emotions. And Baika can really model that very well. Uh, by now we have a huge amount of psychological knowledge in cognitive science, uh, which allows us to implement all this computationally, even using formal logic if necessary. But uh, it's very uh, hard to do. So it, it takes a lot of labor. It needs to be done manually by uh, engineers for every new particular paradigm. And therefore, we must somehow transfer this functionality to neural networks. So th that means that BICA uh, must be used to teach neural networks to uh, to do this kind of behavior and thinking. And maybe uh, those networks will later be able to adapt to new situations, which is much harder for Baika. Uh, so I don't need to tell you what Baika is. I skip this, I skip this. This is my generic view of uh, cognitive architecture, which is uh, slightly bigger than what John Laird showed today. And uh, this is one particular cognitive architecture that we developed in uh, uh, 2005, I guess it was the start, uh, which is called e uh, standing for emotional bike. So what makes it different from other bike? Actually, two elements. Uh, one is moral schema, uh, so-called, another is uh, semantic map. The term semantic map uh, now is used in different senses. Here it means a semantic space in which certain objects are embedded. In other words, uh, every particular word or action or agent is ranked on several scales, which are dimensions of the space. 
And those uh, dimensions could be like dimensions of affective space, which are uh, usually dominance, valence, and arousal, or it could be something uh, more complicated, like a lot of uh, fine tuned functionalities, intentionalities. Uh, like, for example, I am in a mood uh, for uh, friendly informal conversation, or I want to keep a formal tone with you. Uh, I, I want to express my moral support, or I want to cause you uh, to open your mind to me. I, I want to uh, change the topic of uh, conversation. I want to uh, give you uh, uh, some kind of compliment. And uh, so there are many things that are not really emotions, not really uh, particular goals, but they, they are uh, subtle... Uh, fibers, so to speak, of this multidimensional space, which uh, makes it even more uh, high-dimensional than normally it is thought about. So this is what, what is called semantic map. When you have every action, every agent, every object uh, placed in this space, in a particular location, and then you can apply uh, geometrical reasoning to do some semantic inference. Of course. Uh, the moral schema basically is a very simple notion. Uh, to, to make it simple, I, I, would, I should say uh, the idea of a moral schema is that one particular uh, state of affairs, some uh, particular situation is declared normal, the way it should be. And uh, whatever you do must either uh, keep this normal situation or try to achieve it. Like, in the simplest example, and people are standing in a line in a queue, they know who is behind whom, and, and if uh, somebody tries to violate the order, they, they will be placed in their place. So uh, this is normally uh, how it works, and uh, actually this notion applies to all kinds of human relations. It allows you to describe all personal relations, like uh, love, hatred, jealousy, envy, subordination, uh, uh, whatever, shame, compassion, and so on. Uh, but it, it applies even beyond that. So uh, you can expand the no this notion of a moral schema to, to a certain narrative when, uh, when the, uh, the schema itself is, is a graph representing a particular narrative and particular uh, goal in this narrative. Okay, so uh, this is just to mention briefly what it is. Here you see a life cycle of a moral schema which uh, describes what happens when the normal situation violates, then there are certain ways to uh, resolve the conflict. I'm not going into detail here right now. Uh, and uh, how it works, basically there is a competition between uh, traditional uh, rational reasoning and moral reasoning, so to speak, as two factors. Uh, they, they use available freedom in decision-making on both sides and find a compromise in determining the behavior of the agent. You should add here also the somatic factor, which, uh, which is uh, the attempt to achieve pleasure, uh, so to speak. And uh, then you have a three-factor uh, system determining agent behavior, and in my view, this is how human behavior is generated in general. Okay, so this is just an overview of uh, the logic of our approach, which is behind the cognitive architecture called e -bike. Now, once we have it, uh, we can teach neural networks to behave like a human. Uh, of course, if neural network uh, is controlling a virtual person in some virtual environment, it could be um, taught to be like a human if uh, it had a lot of experience with many, many humans around the world. But we cannot give it that experience. It would be very expensive. So what we can do is put cognitive architectures instead of those human participants and uh, run it at high speed so that uh, cognitive architectures would exhibit human-like behavior and neural network learns on this behavior, how, uh, how, to, uh, how to simulate human behavior. And once it achieved that human level, it can now start interacting with, with its own kind 
and uh, it can start evolving. So we can imagine a, a, a sort, a sort of a roadmap to building uh, this this kind of neural network uh, social emotional intelligence. When at the first step we transfer the functionality from biker to neural network, then we organize a scheme of a genetic algorithm in which uh, the population of neural networks uh, evolves in virtual environments, interacting with, it, with each other socially, and at that stage, biker would be uh, can be used as a judge, as a fitness function, for example, uh, which then also can be transferred to a neural network. And finally, uh, the, the result of this evolution could exceed uh, the original starting point of Baika by many, many levels, which we cannot imagine. So that's the hope. I cannot prove this now, but this is an idea. And the way this evolution is done is, instead of uh, applying genetic algorithm to modify uh, parameters and hyperparameters of neural networks like people do today, we use it to modify uh, data on which the network is trained. So the, uh, the behavioral data, which is used uh, to teach neural network how to behave, is subject to uh, mutation, recombination, and uh, this is the process of evolution. So now I will tell you uh, about particular paradigms that we have implemented in our lab. Just uh, given you a few examples, one of which is a virtual receptionist, uh, an agent called registrar, which serves as a receptionist at a hotel. So the person checks in the hotel and there is a conversation, some kind of social interaction, uh, emotional dynamics, and so on. Another is uh, basically the same agent in the role of a virtual psychologist, whose purpose is now to diagnose the personality of the person with uh, whom it is having conversation and determine, uh, let's say, big five parameters of this personality. The, the third example is a virtual classroom when there is a teacher, in this case, teaching a course of SQL and building at the same time uh, personal relationships with the student, uh, taking into account uh, its ability to learn, its uh, uh, ability to lead the process, and adjusting to to that particular type. Uh, the third example is a, a virtual partner dance where you have to select a partner so you, you can dance with any of these two girls and you can switch from one to another and uh, uh, there are multiple possibilities to judge the performance but uh, for example you can uh, see uh, how um, what fr what's the fraction of time when a particular partner ha had a partner in this dance? Or how many times uh, the, you were invited to dance with somebody? And uh, so again, this is uh, this uh, seemingly very simple paradigm requires a human level of uh, social intelligence. And the, the third paradigm, which we also implemented at least to some extent, is a virtual cocktail party like what we had yesterday, right? Uh, in this case, uh, most agents are driven by chat GPT, so basically you, you can come to any table and join any conversation, and then uh, saying that, uh, sorry, I have to get a drink, uh, you uh, go to the big table and then return to another table and have another conversation. And so again, the, the goal is uh, to build uh, good relationships with as many people as possible in this environment. Uh, I do not know yet what would be the practical application, but to me, uh, it would be an interesting result if AI can beat human in, in this particular paradigm. And it seems like it is doable. So, uh, yeah, there is also a paradigm of virtual clownery, uh, of virtual pet, and there are actually many more that we tried. So what are preliminary results? First, we showed that it is indeed possible to transfer functionality from biker to neural network. Uh, we were able to use uh, large, neural, uh, large language models as peripheral devices for communications, which means that uh, LLM was able to recognize intentionality in, in the words of uh, human participants and express uh, requested intentionality in the response. Uh, this was done with two 
LLMs, one of which is Deep Pavlov, another is, of course, ChatGPT. And we used visualizations in uh, Unreal Engine and Unity, and we also used a robot. Uh, those agents passed Turing-like tests when we had a human sitting in another room controlling the virtual character uh, instead of neural network, and the, the subject did not know with whom he is interacting. So uh, the result for this particular uh, Turing test is that uh, in the registrar paradigm, when uh, the LLM was, uh, uh, was deep Pavlov, it was possible to match human characteristic and even exceed human characteristic in ability to elicit emotions in human participant, which surprised me, but then there was an even bigger surprise when we used chat GPT, of course, only as a peripheral device, not as the main model. And uh, we, we also got a, a, a match in all characteristic and significantly higher empathy was attributed to artificial agent compared to human. So the thing that seemed to me impossible appeared to be very easy to achieve. And uh, it, it probably can be explained by low performance of those confederates sitting in the next room who play, played the role of the virtual agent. But still it shows that it is doable. And by the way, this is all statistically significant. Yes, so uh, even with Bonferroni correction. So yeah, the, the third result is um, the ability to do evolution that I mentioned with genetic algorithm. When we modified the data, and in this case we used the game of three cowboys, which I'm not going to describe, but the agents learned uh, to beat some uh, given algorithm written by a human after several cycles training, training by, uh, that result simply shows that uh, the idea works. So we cannot uh, at least, uh, cannot at this point uh, claim that our method is better than traditional reinforcement learning or traditional genetic algorithm applied to neural networks, but we showed that the method works and that would be our next step. So this was also this kind of result. Um, what's, what's the next uh, plan? and the vision for this sort of an agent, I uh, can summarize it as follows. So at the top level, we have a cognitive system controlling the behavior of a virtual agent, which is originally implemented as a biker, and then uh, the same functionality is transformed to neural network to give it the ability to evolve. At, at the language level, we use LLM, like ChatGPT, which is actually multifunctional and allows you to communicate emotionally, do virtually anything you want, and translate language into uh, numbers or any format that you request. And of course, we use visualization and robot platforms to run the experiments. Thank you. This is it. Uh, questions? Yeah. So my question is about the design of that picture. Sorry? The design of that picture. So it's like uh, you mentioned um, in the implementation of architecture there are some human behaviors that need to be modeled in the architecture. Is that a fact? Uh, so the, the architecture itself, uh, again, uh, is... Uh, it's about the human behaviors you are modeling in the architecture, basically. Uh, the, uh, you see the... Yeah, this kind of thing, the definition of the architecture. My question no. is... Oh, sorry. this is you again? Okay. Yeah, oh, sorry. It's, it's <laughs> uh, so the, the architecture is based on uh, these building blocks. Uh, yeah, so my question is, based, uh, is and, about and uh, um, the, the, the philosophy probably be behind the design of the architecture, because do you think it's a difference between the design starting from the behaviors of humans? Like you are trying to modeling the behaviors for humans, then you think about what kind of mechanisms of the cognition should be implemented. And 
The other way I'm conceiving is about implementing the basic mechanisms first, and we'll see by default what kind of behaviors can emerge from the implemented architecture. Do you yeah. think? Uh, so what's maybe I was not clear enough. So we we do not uh, implement particular behavior. We do not program it to behave in a certain way. Instead, we implement this moral schema as a mechanism which determines behavior. And uh, of course, it, it is all uh, generated by itself. So it is not pre-programmed in a sense. That means uh, the idea of this approach is based on uh, copying human psychology into a computer. Like, uh, if you have a notion that you, uh, let's say, have certain relation with somebody uh, who is your friend or is your supervisor, then you should behave accordingly to, uh, to that notion. And this is what basically moral schema is about. Uh, once you see that uh, the situation deviated from that normal state, you ch choose such actions that return uh, the situation to normal. And uh, so this can be, uh, can be called the principal uh, rule of the moral schema. So uh, you minimize the discrepancy between the normal situation and uh, the current situation. Um, I don't know if I answered this question, but uh, yes, in a sense, it is the first principle. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.